Mapping disease genes with pedigrees has several drawbacks. Perhaps the most important one is that it absolutely requires clear Mendelian transmission. A single gene must be responsible for a phenotype. And, as we now know, many important health conditions, such as type 2 diabetes or heart disease, they have a major genetic component, but they aren't Mendelian traits per se. To find genes that contribute to these diseases, we need to be able to scan a massive number of polymorph polymorphisms all at once. And fortunately, such technology is available. And SNP chips, and nowadays also inexpensive DNA sequencing, can allow investigators to find out the genotypes for hundreds of thousands or even millions of SNPs at once for relatively little money. And so what do you do with all of that data? Well, let's say that we had a thousand people with heart disease and a thousand people without heart disease. And let's say that we looked at all of these millions of SNPs and we found one of them where 700 of the people with heart disease have an A and the rest have a C. And in the people without heart disease, let's say 400 of them have an A and 600 of them have a C. This suggests that a gene that is related to whether or not a person develops heart disease is linked to this SNP, right? And because we've looked at many thousands of SNPs for this experiment, the region of the genome in which this gene could be is actually quite small. In such a study, there are only usually a few protein coding genes in a region. And so then, once we have those genes, we can actually go learn more about them, and we can see how or if any of them are actually molecularly related to the development of heart disease. And so note that I was quite careful to say that a gene related to heart disease might be in this region. I didn't say the gene that causes heart disease, right? Heart disease is a complex trait. It is influenced by many genes and also by the environment and by a person's decisions and lots of other things. And so despite the complexity of these situations, modern genetics can actually tell us quite a lot about the genes that underlie these complex traits. And next week, we're going to dig into it.